Naga is not etymologically related to the word Nagus. The word Naga, which is said to have an East Indian origin or East Indian origination, and a word that many, many New Age and reptilian uh, Satanist Luciferian hunters out there have what they would call conspiracy theorists, but it's not a theory, but anyway, the conspiracy reality hunters such as David Icke and others who have provided us a lot of useful and valuable information in, in their research. So we don't want to dismiss some of the useful and much of the useful and valuable information out there in ones like David Icke's works and his videos and research on the reptilians and the new world, so-called new world or the Illuminati Freemasonic agenda, which has helped to awaken many people, even though many still are sleepers, but many have been awakened to this. But the point is to beware of false etymology. We've come across false etymology, which purports the origin of Ethiopic or Amharic or Gutiz or Agaazi words, such as Nugus, really Nagush, Nagus, and Aras. Some allege that Aras is related to Ray or mispronounced Ra from ancient Egypt, the sun god, quote-unquote, of ancient Egypt, or one of the early, um, some say, primordial kings of the region which we call ancient Egypt today, or Kam, Kemet, so forth and so on. But Naga and Nigus is not etymologically related because some are trying to purport that all kings and every king that, that's ruling or every king that has ruled, you understand, amongst certain dynasties or among certain monarchies, ancient monarchies, are all related and all derive their power from the serpent people or the Ibab of the Babylonians. This is, this is categorically incorrect and a lot of it is based on false etymology and this is part of also the reptilians agenda to even confuse a lot of the information because if you do a little bit of etymological linguistic study on it for yourself you'll recognize that Nigus and Naga we can look for other words in Ethiopic for Naga perhaps I thought about this for a while and I began to recognize perhaps what they're confusing is the Hebrew Nahas Nahas or Nakas, Nahas, Nakas, because the K sound and the H, the hard H sound, or the Ch, the Ch sound, often has gotten confused among certain um, misspeakers and forced Hebrew speakers like the Ashkenazis and the others. The K sound among certain tribes and peoples because of ineffective articulation. You understand? Because remember Shem of the Shem, the Shem is the priest, the rightful priest. Many have intruded into the priesthood. So many of these who could not speak properly, who spoke with a uh, reptilian lisp, in other words. And we're not saying everybody has a lisp as a reptilian. Don't get it twisted. However, they confuse the Naha sound with the Naha sound. But that's only in the sub-languages, the Babel languages, the language that came from Babel or the Ibab when the reptilians were defeated by Nimrod. It's actually Nimrod, the Ethiopian, who defeated the reptilians, but they have flipped that story as well with this whole Semiramis and Nimrod and so forth, and that come out of the Jewish fables. But just suffice it to say for right now, and we want to put this word out, that Nagas, or, or Naga, you understand, Naga, or Naga, is not etymologically related to Nagus, just as Re, which is mispronounced as Ra, is not etymologically related to Aras. And there's many of even our Rasta people and our Rastafari brothers and sisters who are under that false impression because of the misinformation and many have not done due diligence on learning the pure language that Zephaniah 3, chapter 3, verse 9 and 10 speaks about, that he will turn to us a pure language. And for us, this is the royal or the showing Amharic, Amarinya language of Nagusa Neges, 
the king of kings, Zet, Ethiopia, the king of kings of Ethiopia, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, Kedemawi, Hila Selassie, the Kadmon or the Kedmon, the Kadmus, Adam, the Siyume Egeziadihir. When we go a little bit further into the the history and the so-called legend and the so-called um, what ones will call derisively speaking mythology, but when one goes into the Queen of Sheba and the King Solomon uh, historical records and legend and put it all together, one will recognize that the beginning of the so-called Solomonic, or more correctly, the Davidic kings, or the renewing of the kingdom of David or Dawit in the Ethiopia, the Tob land, the Tobia, the Ethiopia, began or continued, were able to defeat the serpents, were able to defeat the reptilian. If you look at the Queen of Sheba, Makeda, and the legends concerning Makeda, it was because her father, Makeda's father, defeated the reptilians. Makeda's father killed the reptilians, and because of this, was the beginning, this made way for the beginning of the renewing of the kingdom of David through Solomon and Nagishta, the Azeb Nagisht, uh, Nagisht Makeda's only son, Minulik, Kadamawi Minulik, the Kadmon Minulik, Eben Hakim, Bainalechem, or Dagmawi Dawid, or David the second. So, when we look at the Solomonic dynasty of of Ethiopia or the Tob the the Tob land the the Eret Eret Tob or the land the good land which is the original etymology of Ethiopia does not come from the Greeks the original etymology of Ethiopia come from Tobijah or Tobia come from Tob and Tob in the Hebrew mispronounced by the Ashkenazis Tov or Tova as they say Tova Raba. Tov means good in the forced Hebrew of the Ashkenazis, but when we go to the Ethiopic root, we find that Tov is pronounced correctly as Tob, and then we have Tobia to be the ancient and archaic name for Ethiopia from our highland Ethiopian source. 